Welcome to the Story Exchange. We are sipping tea today. And not just any tea, but tea made with fresh sprigs of cedar. It's a favorite of entrepreneur Dana Thompson, who we interviewed recently in Minneapolis. Thank you. I'm obsessed with my tea. If I don't have my tea in the morning. Dana is the founder of a nonprofit food lab called Natives, which stands for North American Traditional Indigenous Food Systems. In indigenous culture, the cedar tree is known for its healing powers. It's fresh and it's growing all around us. Dana is also the co-owner of the for-profit Awamni restaurant in Minneapolis, which in 2022 won the James Beard Award for Best New Restaurant in the Country. Awamni means the place of swirling waters. Her business partner is Sean Sherman, also known as the Sioux Chef. And that's Sioux as in S-I-O-U-X. I grew up on Pine Ridge Reservation. Uh, We were Lakota, just like a lot of people there. The sous chef business is about uncovering the indigenous foods of North America. Uh, Specifically with the word Sioux, we're talking about Dakota foods, Dakota Lakota foods, and Anishinaabe here in Minnesota. Hi, welcome. How are you? We visited Awamni recently, and what's happening there is really incredible. So we're one of the first and only indigenous restaurants in the country. We're completely decolonized, so we don't have any beef, pork, chicken, no dairy, gluten, or um, soy. The space is light, airy, and modern, perched over a waterfall on the Mississippi River. There's this cool neon sign that reminds customers in big letters, you are on native land. We've got our duck egg aioli, uh, pickled carrots, and blueberries. The food's really delicious. It's sourced from indigenous food producers. You'll see things on the menu like rabbit and bison, hand-harvested wild rice, and wild greens with toasted crickets. Basically, it's only food that was eaten before Europeans arrived. Oh, it's really good. It's really good. You know, we have to be connected to the earth. And it's important to understand that indigenous peoples across the globe have had the blueprint to live sustainably, utilizing primarily plant knowledge when it comes down to it for food, for medicine, and for crafting and all the things. You want some more, Dad? No, a little ginger. What Dana and Sean are doing is part of a broader movement called food sovereignty, or the right of indigenous people to have culturally appropriate food raised sustainably. The idea is embraced by the National Congress of American Indians. It's discussed in TED Talks, and it's showing up in food carts, startups, and restaurants. The hope is that ancestral foods might restore some of what was, sadly and traumatically, lost. The elders were the ones that were saying, here's why we're going to do it this way. This is how we're going to survive. All that knowledge of how to live responsibly off the land, along with language, culture, and religion, so much of that, was systematically removed through the boarding school process, genocide, and forced assimilation. What are we looking for? Just seeing what's out there. Oh, this sumac. It's a spring day, and Sean and Dana are walking through the Wazupi Tribal Community Farm on the outskirts of Minneapolis. There's just so much great indigenous-produced food coming out of this place right here. And it's great that they're able to do this for the community and that they keep the the store pretty well stocked with some really good food. The farm has rows of vegetables, an orchard, a greenhouse. It marries modern farming techniques with traditional native values. Just a couple there. I think those are violets. Yeah, yeah they're, so violets. they're edible. Edible flowers. Yeah. Put them on the desserts. Sean and Dana the are speaking with tribal representative David Pickett the Third. There's some like juniper on up there, but it's from last year, so I don't know right. if you really want it. There's some like burdock and stuff we could dig up. But Diabetes know. runs rampant throughout Indian country. Like it's just everywhere. I kind of credit this farm a lot for like that we're not all diabetic like a lot of our ancestors were, I guess, so. What did you grow up eating? <laughs> a lot of canned food. I think I'm like one of the last ones from this reservation that remembers commods. So that was when the government would give us the box and it'd be like all the mushy stuff and just like the can that just said pork on it, had a little outline of a pig or whatever. At the farm, the focus is on revitalizing food traditions and the ancient wisdom in that. Here's Sean again. My ancestors would have had a really large knowledge of plants and how to harvest them, when to harvest them, which parts to harvest. This is all sumac here. 
in a couple months, this is gonna just be gorgeous. It was still cold, and to my inexperienced eye, it didn't look like much was growing. We're trying to create a whole different set of programs to raise awareness about uh, foraging, wild foods, uh, food creation, um, different types of preservation techniques, and um, sort of re-indigenizing in a way that will translate onto Indian reservations all over. What sort of things do you hope to find this time of year? Well, everything's just cut, popping up. I mean, two weeks ago, there was nothing. <laughs> now it's all over the place. Lots of yarrow. There's obviously lots of dandelion and clover and things. And... My mom talked a lot about our indigenous background because her father spoke uh, fluent Dakota. She also was very much into being outside hiking through the woods, planting a garden, and understanding the wild foods all around us. This is choke cherry here, huh? Oh, they smell so good. Yep. I remember us harvesting choke cherries, um, you know, throughout my childhood. And I can just remember the smell of the choke cherry sauce cooking on the stove. It's incredible. Sean has a long history working in restaurants. He and his friends got their first restaurant jobs at just 13. We were just young, but there was a little bit more money involved, and plus we got free food. One of his first big jobs was making fresh pasta at an Italian restaurant. And then my career just took me through all sorts of twists and turns, so running Spanish restaurants, running Japanese restaurants, running just American bistros and farm-to-table kind of things, and it was, it was pretty, pretty fun. Restaurant work's grueling, though, so Sean eventually took a long break in Mexico. So that's just where I had the epiphany of where I'm at today. He noticed the indigenous community there selling beadwork. Well, it reminded me of a lot of the beadwork I saw growing up with my Lakota family. He also learned about pre-colonial food in Mexico. And then all of a sudden realized that I knew very little about my own heritage food, even though I discovered so much about so many other cultures, especially European cuisines. And then um, just really finding that path to start to figure out what to do to reconnect with my ancestors. The path led to catering events in Minneapolis centered around indigenous food and a 2017 cookbook called The Sioux Chef's Indigenous Kitchen. So I spent quite a few years just trying to research and try to understand what that is and identify what are indigenous foods. Not only looking at the past, but looking at the future. How can we bring this knowledge to where we are right now today? He and Dana met at one of those events in 2014. Sean made bison meatball soup. I just breathed through the meal, which was so delicious. And Dana had her own epiphany when Sean began talking about his vision. I... I'm not exaggerating when I say that I felt electrical currents running through my entire body, out the bottoms of my feet into the earth, through the ends of my fingers, out the ends of my hair. I felt like I was going to pass out, and I was just absolutely blown away. And I felt like, I felt like my ancestors were there with me. The two became business partners and also romantic partners for a number of years, although they have since broken up. Right. But anyhow, Dana helped Sean execute his plan. Then Dana came on and just started help project managing, and that helped out a ton, you know, and we were able to grow so much. While Dana had a rough start in life, I came from abject poverty. She had gotten a lucky break, landing a corporate job at Target that had taught her all about marketing and branding. Working at Target was like going to college for me. I never thought I could go to college for a single day um, to have that access to the network of these brilliant business minds at Target was such an a incredible experience for me. In 2017, Sean and Dana began a partnership with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board to develop a restaurant in a new waterfront park. Four years later, following a pandemic delay, they finally opened Owamne. We got the blue corn going, obviously, right now. Is that hot? And then, then, big news, the next year, in 2022... Here's TV station CARE 11. Minneapolis is now home to the best new restaurant in the country. 
At a very glitzy event, Dana had on this great gold ball gown. Awamni took the honor at last night's James Beard Awards in Chicago. They're sort of the Oscars of the food industry. Our ancestors are proud tonight because we're doing something different. We're putting health on the table, we're putting culture on the table, and we're putting our stories on the table. We plan to also insist in helping restaurants like ours open all over North America by other Native people seeking access to their own ancestral foods. So thank you so much. Sean and Dana have opened a training center called the Indigenous Food Lab, part of their nonprofit work at Natives. So part of our planning is being, becoming an incubator for indigenous entrepreneurs, whether they're like a food truck operator or a caterer or they want to open up a restaurant. I've seen over the course of the last year, you have just kept refining and making it better and yeah. learning ways to make it more, more yeah. authentic. And yeah. you're the specialist now. Yeah. No, I try. I, I want to learn more, you know? Yeah, yeah. me too. Every day, so <laughs> more better, so yeah, yep. it's fine. Absolutely. And Dana is delving further into health and wellness. She often speaks on the link between food and mental health. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about how ancestral foods can be a way to healing trauma in communities. Dana told us that it's amazing to see customers come into Awamni. Like the staff, many have Native ancestry, and especially the elders, when they begin eating the food, things that have been suppressed for some time, childhood memories about their culture, begin to come out. They sit at the table and weep. Strawberry salad? Thank you. You know, we use really beautiful proteins here where we've got all this bounty of lake fish, but we also use venison, bison, pheasant, quail, rabbit. It's just so healthy, you know, the indigenous foods, like if we just ate like what was from here and ate like indigenous peoples and you just feel energized and clean and it doesn't weigh in your stomach um, and it's just the way we should be eating. We thank Dana Thompson and Sean Sherman for speaking with us. And we thank you for listening. This has been the Story Exchange. Join us next time to hear more stories about innovative and inspirational women doing the things you'd never dream of. Or maybe you would. If you like this podcast, please share on social media or post a review wherever you listen. It helps other people find the show. And visit our website at thestoryexchange.org where you'll find news, videos, and tips for entrepreneurial women. And we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at info at thestoryexchange.org or find us on Facebook. I'm Colleen DeBase, sound editing provided by Nusha Balian. Interview recorded by Sam Shin and Nick Mihalovich. Production coordinator is Noelle Flago. Audio courtesy of the James Beard Foundation. Our mixer is Pat Donahue from String and Can. Executive producers are Sue Williams and Victoria Wong. Recorded at Cutting Room Studios in New York City. <laughs>